So you just finished the game and you really feel that something didn't go right. It was an end game in which you should have been able to hold relatively comfortably, but somehow things didn't work out that way. You either screwed up or your opponent outplayed you or a little bit of both, and it ended up as a loss for you. Now you've decided, you know what, I'm not going to let this happen again. I'm going to use chess base to be able to study these end games specifically and learn from them to avoid these mistakes in the future. So let's take a look and see how that's done. So as you can see, the end game in question that I mentioned wasn't by myself or by a player necessarily of your caliber, but was by elite players Magnus Carlsen and Wesley So. And in this particular position, we have a position where Magnus Carlsen ended up winning because Wesley So, in this position where he should have been able to hold, blundered and ended up losing. Now, a blunder can happen to everybody, but let's assume for argument's sake that he decided that the problem was that he didn't understand it well enough, and this led to the blunder that he ended up committing. How would he go about studying this and learning from other positions to change this factor? Well, at the very top, we have Home, Insert, Board, Report. Let's click on Report. And we have a number of buttons available, Novelty Innovation, Same Players, Opening Report, and Similar Endgames. So we we'll click on Similar Endgames, and it opens up a dialog. And the dialog looks kind of complicated and scary. It's full of little buttons and material counts and whatever. You don't have to worry because it already analyzed the end game position open on the board and already configured it to match it. Not only does it match all of the materials, such as four white pawns, one white knight, three black pawns, one black bishop, but it even says white has to have at least a passed pawn and black cannot have a passed pawn. What that means is that if black turns up with a passed pawn, which is not in this particular game, it will be rejected by the search. So let's click on OK and see what happens. Now, after no fewer than 12%, we already have as many as 5,000 matches, which far exceeds what we could possibly use to study. But there's another little problem involved. So let's click on Stop and see what that might be. Since the goal here is to take these end games that match ours, at least in general criteria, and study them, we notice that the results actually are turning up results not just of grandmasters and masters, but even of beginner players. And there's nothing wrong with a beginner player, but remember, we're trying to get games where we can study the moves played by other players and learn from them. And a beginner player, unfortunately, isn't going to match that criteria. We don't want to learn from a beginner player. We want to study only the grandmasters. We could, of course, handpick them, but there's a much easier way to do this. Let's try it again. Again, we have the same dialogue, material, everything is the same, and that should not be touched. There's nothing wrong with it. But we're going to go to the left where it says Metals, Position, Annotations, Game Data. And we click on Game Data, and again, a large dialogue full of options. Don't worry about it. What we really care about here is ELO. And we notice that it says None. What we want is both players to have an ELO matching at least 2,500 and above, up to 3,500, well, an engine. And any game that has both players at least of 2,500 strength will turn up in the match criteria, but not less. So that the moves that we analyze will, of course, be of a much higher quality. So it turned up as many as 2,600 examples, and that's just fine. But more importantly, you'll notice that, of course, the criteria of the player is much higher. And here's an interesting detail. The top results aren't ordered by name or by ELO, but rather by how closely they match the original position. So for example, look carefully at the position we have on the board. And I'm going to click on Predojevic against Shabalov. And as you can see, yes, there are a few differences, but it is essentially the same configuration. We have a past e-pawn. We, well, we have a pawn, let's say, on E, we have a bishop, we have two pawns on G and H, we have a rook, we have a knight, and we have a passed pawn on A. This is exactly the way the position was. Let's restore the game. Very similar. There are a few differences, but it's not significant. If we go down again, Grishuk versus Sargissian, again, we have the same criteria. We have the knight, we have the pawn on A, we have the E pawn here, bishop, two pawns, etc. So... These are positions by grandmasters that match the position or the criteria of the position we're studying. Excellent. Now, how can we save all of these games to a database for future study so that we don't have to keep this open forever? Well, we choose on any game. Let's go back and choose, let's say, Control A. And you can see all of the games have been highlighted. We right click on it and we choose Output and Database. 
And here all we have to do is choose a database that we want or create a new one. Endgame.2CBH. And we're going to click on new. It'll create a new database and save all of those games into it. And once the database has been saved, you're good to go. That, my friend, is the lesson of the day.